In this presentation, we will understand how for loop works with strings. So without any further delay, let's get started. The first topic of this presentation is accessing characters of a string using for loop. The second topic is iterating a string in reverse order using for loop. And the third topic is accessing words of a string using for loop. So let's get started with the first topic that is accessing characters of a string using for loop. How to access each character of a string? We can access each character of a string using for loop. For loop can be used to access all characters of a string. So with the help of for loop, we can access all characters of a string one at a time. And we can do whatever we want to do with those characters. For example, let's say that name of some person is John. So name variable is pointing to the string John. Now let's say that we want to access each character of the string and we want to display those characters on the screen. For this purpose, we can use for loop. This is how our for statement looks like. For C in name. Name variable will eventually be replaced by John and this variable because of this for statement will receive each character of the string one at a time. So first this variable C will receive character J, then O, then H and then N. In this way all the characters of the string are accessed. This means that the statements inside this for loop will be executed a total of four times because this string has a total of four characters. Now, inside this for loop, we just want to use the print function to display each character received over here in this variable c. We can type print c for this purpose. But let's say we want to print each character in the same line. Then in that case, just typing print c will not help. We know that if we just type print c, then each character will take its own line. But we want to display each character in the same line. For this purpose, we need to provide one more argument to the print function. So this is how our print function looks like. We need to provide this second argument to this print function if we want to display all characters in the same line end equal to single quotes and within single quotes one white space character. Now this white space character is optional. If we want to display each character, but we want that after each character, white space character should come, then in that case, within these single quotes, we need to provide one white space character. So with this, after each character, one white space character will be added. So when we see the output, we will see J, then the white space character, then O, then the white space character, then H, then the white space character, then N, then the white space character. In this way, the output will be printed. Now, it's your choice how you want to see the output. After executing this code, we will get this output, John. As it can be observed that each character is separated by a white space character. I hope you have understood how to access each character of a string using for loop. Now let's move on to the next topic that is iterating a string in reverse order. How to iterate a string in reverse order using for loop? We know that we can access each character of a string using for loop. We have already learned this. But how to access each character in reverse order? In order to access each character, we know we can use the for loop. But if we can reverse the string beforehand and provide that to the for loop, then we know that the rest of the job will be done by for loop. For loop will allow us to access each character in reverse order in that case. So first, we need to reverse the string. In order to reverse a string, we can use slicing. Recall that slicing allows us to reverse a string. We have learned how to reverse a string using slicing already in one of our lectures. Now let's understand how to access each character of a string in reverse order using for loop. 
For this purpose, we will take one simple example. Let's say that name of some person is John and this time we want to access these characters in reverse order. This means that we want to access N first, then H, then O and then J. For this purpose, we need this for statement. For C in name within square brackets, two columns and then minus one. Here we are omitting the first and second parameter because we want to access all the characters. The third parameter is the step value. This is minus one, which means that the string will be accessed in reverse order. So eventually at runtime, this will be replaced by the string with characters N, H, O, J in the same order. And each character will be received by this variable C at runtime. Now we just want to print those characters. For this, we need this print function. After executing this code, we will get this output N, H, O, and then J. In this way, we can access each character of a string in reverse order. I hope this concept is clear. Now let's move on to the next topic that is accessing words of a string using for loop. How to access words of a string? Up to this point, we have understood how to access each character of a string. But what if we want to access words of a string? How to do that? We know that for loop can be used to access each character of a string. We have learned that already. But this time we want to access words of a string. If we want to access each character of a string, we just need to provide that string to the for loop and for loop will allow us to access the characters of that string. But in order to access each word of a string, we first need to split the string into words and then after this we can use for loop to access those words. So for this purpose, we can use the split function. Split function can be used to split a string into words. We know this already. According to the separator that we provide as an argument to the split function, split function can be used to split a string into words. Now let's consider one example to understand how to access words of a string using for loop. Let's say that we have this sentence, lorem, ipsum, dollar, sit, emit, and so on. This is just a random string. This sentence variable is pointing to the string and let's say that we want to access each word of the string. For this purpose, first we can use split function to split the string into words. We don't have to provide the separator because by default the separator is a white space character. So automatically with the help of split function, we can divide the string into words. But let's say we just don't want to access the words. We want to count how many words are there in the string. For this purpose, we need this variable count. Count is initialized to zero as the initial count is zero. Now, this is how our for statement looks like. For word in sentence dot split. Here, we are using sentence dot split to split the string into words. Eventually, we will get a list of words and those words will be provided to this word variable one at a time. Now, we don't want to print the word on the screen. We want to count how many words are there in this sentence. So, inside this for loop, we just need this statement, count plus equal to one. After accessing a word, we just need to increment the count. So after accessing this word lorem, count is incremented by one. Then after accessing this word, count is incremented by one. Count becomes two. In this way, the count is incremented. And in this way, we would be able to count the words of the sentence. I hope this is clear. Now after this for loop, we just want to print the count like this. There are count words in the sentence. Here we are using the f string. Because of the f string, we would be able to embed the variables within the string. Here we are embedding this variable count. Eventually at runtime, this will be replaced by the 
value of the count variable. After executing this code, we will get this output. There are six words in the sentence, which is correct. There are a total of six words in this sentence. One, two, three, four, five, then six. I hope this program is clear. So with this, we are done with this topic also. And this means that we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.